My name is Cora and I'm 45 years old. I have lived a pretty good life with my husband Gordon and my son Liam, but things haven't been the same since five years ago. Five years ago, our lives took an unexpected turn, leading to a deep divide within our family dynamic. I have been a woman who has always strived to put her family first. Unfortunately, my husband Gordon seemed to prioritize everyone else except for us. His actions left me feeling hurt, betrayed, and resentful. It all started when Gordon sponsored the college education of our neighbor's daughter, Vanessa. While I believed in helping others, it stung that he willingly paid for her tuition while refusing to contribute a single penny towards our own son's college expenses. Liam, our beloved son, who was destined for great things, was left feeling neglected and unimportant in his own father's eyes. The divide between father and son only grew wider with each passing day. What hurt the most was Gordon's constant praise of our neighbors. He would often proclaim how beautiful their family was, contrasting it with his dissatisfaction and disappointment in our own. Gordon defended his decision, claiming that Hope, Vanessa's mother, was a struggling single parent after her divorce. He wanted to assist them financially, completely disregarding the fact that we were also facing financial constraints of our own. Gordon would flaunt his wealth, putting on a show to prove his generosity and magnanimity. Meanwhile, our own family's needs were being compromised and we had to make sacrifices due to his lavish spending. It was a painful realization that Gordon valued the image of being a benefactor more than the well-being and future of his own family. The tension between us grew to unbearable levels, and Liam, feeling rejected and resentful, decided to distance himself completely from his father. He made the difficult decision to move out, seeking solace and understanding elsewhere. It was a heartbreaking moment for me as a mother, witnessing the emotional toll that Gordon's actions had taken on our son. Liam, please reconsider. I don't want you to leave like this. We can find a way to fix things, to mend our family. Mom, you know I love you and it breaks my heart to leave you behind, but I can't keep living in this toxic environment. I need to focus on my growth, my future. Dad has made it clear that he doesn't value me or my dreams. I have to put myself first and create a life where I can thrive. Liam, don't be so dramatic. You're blowing things out of proportion. You're acting like a spoiled child. No, Dad. I'm done listening to your excuses and empty words. You've neglected me for far too long, always putting others before your own family. I won't allow myself to be treated as an afterthought any longer. I deserve better. How could you say that, Gordon? Liam is leaving because of your actions and your neglect. This is on you. Oh, now it's my fault. You two always gang up on me. I've done my best for this family. Your best? Your best was paying for someone else's child's education while refusing to support your own son. You've pushed Liam away with your selfishness and favoritism. I can't believe I ever trusted you with our family's well-being. As Liam walked away that day, a heaviness filled the air, and my heart shattered into pieces. I watched my son leave, torn between my love for my child and anger toward my stupid husband. Gordon stood there with a mixture of regret and stubbornness etched on his face, though he'd never admit it, he realized the consequences of his actions. As the years passed, the wounds remained fresh, and I found it increasingly challenging to maintain a sense of peace within our household. The resentment festered deep within me, fueling a desire for revenge, for justice. I wanted to expose Gordon's hypocrisy and make him realize the pain he had caused our family. After enduring this pain and suffering in silence for five years, I had had enough. It was time to confront Gordon and make him face the consequences of his actions. No longer would we be pushed aside, neglected and treated as secondary. Our voices would be heard and our worth acknowledged. As I prepared myself for the battle ahead, I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I was ready to fight for the justice our family deserved. 
The stage was set and the pieces were falling into place. Revenge would be sweet, but it would also serve as a wake-up call to Gordon, reminding him of the love and loyalty he had taken for granted. The time for action had come and I would seize it with determination and resolve. It was time to bring balance and fairness back into our lives and in doing so, reclaim the happiness and unity that had been shattered by Gordon's misplaced priorities. The storm was brewing and soon it would unleash its fury, leaving no room for compromise or appeasement. I should probably mention that because of his generosity, the neighbors, Hope and Vanessa, were practically obsessed with Gordon. They were always calling in to check on him, never on me, mind you, and they would often bring cupcakes and other baked goods to show their gratitude. Sometimes I would even catch Hope shamelessly flirting with Gordon. Luckily for me, I didn't care. If I'm being honest, the flame of blissful marriage was snuffed out years ago and all that remained were dying embers. One day, Hope and Vanessa made their infamous visits. I opened the door for them and greeted them. Oh, hey guys, how are you? We're doing just fine, thank you. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Come in, come in. Is Gordon home? Yes. Oh, how lovely. We came to drop off the cookies we made. I hope he likes them. He always likes our cooking, Vanessa. All right, well, have a seat. Please feel at home. Oh, trust us, we already do. Your husband is so compassionate and kind, and he's so charming and handsome, too. Excuse me? I I just mean that you're so lucky. If only you knew. What was that? Nothing. I think I hear him coming down now. Gordon made his way downstairs, shouting about how he heard a lot of noise and that I needed to keep it down. But when he saw that it was his favorite family who came to visit, he plastered on a big smile. Oh, Gordon, it's so wonderful to see you. We've missed you and your lavish lifestyle. You're such a successful and generous man. Yes, Gordon, we've always looked up to you. You've been an inspiration to us all. Your wealth and achievements are simply remarkable. We just wanted to show our everlasting gratitude by giving you some cookies. It was certainly nice of you both to drop by. Gordon has always been quite the charmer, hasn't he? Ladies, please make yourselves comfortable. Cora, be more hospitable. Can't you see our guests are impressed by my success? The afternoon was spent with Hope and Vanessa continuously gushing at Gordon's stories, and he was just soaking in all the glam and glory that he was receiving from them. It must have been nice playing pretend for a while, but I was getting sick of hearing it, considering how he never spent that money on his actual family. So I got up and left. Eventually, as evening set in and the guests had finally gone home, Gordon approached me with an angry look on his face. What the hell is your problem? Whatever do you mean, my kind and generous man? Cut the crap. Why did you leave? Are you trying to make me look bad? <laughs> me? Make you look bad? You do that all by yourself, Gordon. Why do you always have to ruin everything? Ruin everything? You've ruined our family, Gordon. I have every right to feel upset. And if I have to leave the conversation because I can't stand you, then that's exactly what I'll do. You're just a bitter, resentful woman. No wonder our son left. He's better off without you. I stood there stunned by the harshness of his words. Deep down, he knew that his neglect and favoritism drove our son away. But the pain of hearing it, spoken aloud, especially after so long, pierced my heart. It's like I could hear the cracks in our marriage deepen, and these wounds seemed irreparable. How dare you say that? Liam left because of your neglect. You're prioritizing everyone else but your own family. You've never truly supported him or shown any interest in his dreams. You have the money to do so, but you just chose not to support him. How could you be so cruel? That's not true. I've done so much for our family and Liam. I sponsored Vanessa's college tuition to help her get ahead in life. Yes, and you were so generous to Vanessa. But what about your own son? You refused to contribute a single penny to his education. You made him feel worthless and abandoned. You don't understand, Cora. 
We had to help Hope and Vanessa. They were struggling after the divorce. I wanted to make a difference in their lives. Why? You're not Superman. It's not your job to help on such an enormous scale, and you can pay for a million kids' education. I don't care. But refusing to pay for your own son, now that's low. I, I wanted him to learn on his own. I, I didn't want to give him any handouts. You're his father, Gordon. It's okay to help him and pay for his education. You left him to fend for himself when you had the means to help, but you choose not to show him that you didn't even care about him at all. I, I didn't realize how much it affected him. I thought I was doing the right thing. Well, it's too late now. Liam has moved on, and I don't blame him. He needed a father who would be there for him, support him, and believe in his dreams. Not someone who chooses to help everyone else except his family. Gordon looked distraught as if he was only now realizing the weight of his actions. His pride and arrogance had run so deep that he really didn't know that what he was doing had a serious impact on this family. He looked remorseful, but I wasn't satisfied. He started apologizing profusely, begging for another chance, but my well of sympathy had already run dry. Oh, so now you want to listen to me. I've been repeating the same thing ever since Liam left, Gordon. Why the change of heart now? I, I don't know what came over me. Well, it's too little too late. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in your excuses, your apologies, or anything else you have to offer. I want a divorce. I saw the last piece of resolve completely shatter in his eyes. Good. Mine had been missing for years now, and honestly, I don't know why I stayed as long as I did, but now I was ready to leave. Cora, please, please, let's talk about this. What is there to talk about? You've already ruined everything. You might as well marry Hope and adopt Vanessa as your own, since you're obsessed with them. I, I don't want them. I want you. I want Liam. You haven't spoken to him ever since he left. Just the other day when I was on the phone with him, you refused to speak with him. I know, but I would like to try. You're pathetic. I wish I did this sooner. Perhaps I wouldn't have wasted years of my life waiting for you to do better. But now I don't have any patience left. I'm leaving. Cora, please, at least stay the night. It's late. You can't go anywhere at this time. It's not safe. Just stay the night. We don't even have to sleep in the same bed. Ugh, fine. I'll stay the night. I'll need to pack my things in the morning anyways. I went to bed whilst Gordon went downstairs to sleep on the couch. Surprisingly, I wasn't too hurt by everything. I meant it when I said I was done. I had nothing left to give Gordon and I was ready to leave. Gordon, on the other hand, appeared to be a wreck. I could hear his sobs throughout the night. The next morning I got up, made a quick breakfast and got to work packing up my belongings. All the while, Gordon was trying to stop me, putting things back in place and unloading my items, but I continued to work, and by the late afternoon, I had most of my things in boxes and lined up at the front door. Gordon stopped halting my progress several hours ago after I shouted at him and threatened to leave then and there. I was proud of myself for the progress I made, and I knew that it would be long before I was finished. But... Something put a complete halt to my progress, and I was not happy about it one bit. The doorbell went off, and I was surprised because I wasn't expecting any company, especially at 6 p.m. I opened the door to none other than Hope and Vanessa, beaming eagerly on the other side, just as they had done the day before. Oh, hello, Cora. Hello. What a pleasant surprise. We all looked at each other with confusion. I didn't know what they were doing here. And they too also looked confused, like they were supposed to be here. I invited them inside and I noticed their looks of confusion grow as they saw the boxes lined up near the entrance. I could tell that they wanted to inquire, but considering how awkward our encounter was in the beginning, they must have decided against it. I invited them to sit down and we made some small talk, but it was still very awkward. What were they doing here so late? As if she could hear my thoughts, Vanessa said, We're here for the dinner that Gordon said would be happening. Dinner? Yes, he said that you had invited us over for dinner, which we are tremendously grateful for. Your generosity is always appreciated, really. 
Would you excuse me for one moment? Oh, sure. After giving them some refreshments and snacks, I marched right upstairs to confront the idiot that I had the displeasure of calling my husband. What the hell is wrong with you? What, are they here? You slimy little... I knew you were going to be upset, but I had to seize this opportunity, Cora. What opportunity? Haven't you embarrassed me enough? I thought that we could all have a nice dinner together. And when did you decide that? Earlier this morning, when you were packing your things, I called Hope and I invited her to dinner. And when were you planning on telling me this? You expected me to pull a dinner out of thin air? You're so unbelievably selfish. I thought that if I could just show you how good they are as people and that they are worthy of our help, then maybe you wouldn't leave me and maybe Liam would come back and we could all be happy once again. I don't know when you're going to get this through your thick skull, but I am not interested in being with you and I'm certainly not interested in sticking around as you try to play house with two families at the same time. Are you sick in the head? Cora, I'm getting sick of this attitude. I let you have your little temper tantrum. I even let you finish packing your things so that you could be satisfied. But now you're doing too much. Doing too much? You thought that I wouldn't leave after packing all of my belongings and telling you that I wanted a divorce? Yes, because I know you. You wouldn't leave me. Is that what you really think? That's what I know. Besides, you should be thanking me. I've allowed you to apologize to both Vanessa and Hope for your leaving in the middle of our afternoon chat yesterday. You can make it up to them by preparing a lovely dinner. Now go and do your job. When I tell you that I have never yelled and screamed so much in my life, I was convinced that the neighbors heard all of the commotion. We lived in a pretty well-to-do neighborhood considering my husband's wealth, and so I was pretty sure that someone was going to call the cops. But at that moment... I didn't care, not one bit. I yelled every obscenity that ever existed. I threw things around his office and I yelled about how he was the worst thing that ever happened to me. I yelled at him for a good 10 minutes and whenever he tried to interject, I just yelled even more. Until finally, he was left speechless, completely flabbergasted that I would speak to him like this. You're nothing and that's all you'll ever be. See you in hell. And with that, I went downstairs, still huffing and puffing from what was the worst screaming session I could ever anticipate. I could already feel my voice getting hoarse. I found both Hope and Vanessa rigid in their seats, their faces paler than a vampire's. They heard everything. Vanessa said, I, I know it's not my place to say anything, but what is going on? Is everything all right? No, Vanessa, everything isn't all right. If you must know, you can certainly find out all you need to know, though, you can meet your father upstairs and ask him yourself. Both of them looked super perplexed. Oh, why do you look surprised? Well, which father? Oh, well, the father that's been taking care of you. Let me bring you to him. Even though they denied it, looking like they desperately wanted to leave, I insisted that they made their way upstairs to find a man who has been loving and cherishing them as his own for many years. Gordon was surprised to see them and he tried to hide his anger and embarrassment with a smile, but we could all see right through it. You see, Vanessa, Hope, Gordon has been so generous to both of you, right? Giving you anything you've ever asked for and needed, including funding your entire university career, Vanessa. Right, and I'm so grateful. Yes, well, even though he's quite rich, has he told you how he couldn't care less about this family? What? That, that's not true. Oh, it isn't true? Well, then, why don't you tell them why Liam left? Gordon hesitated, but eventually he, he admitted that it was because he didn't pay his college tuition. Hope and Vanessa audibly gasped. Vanessa even asked if that's the reason why Liam left all those years ago, and Gordon after taking a long pause, said yes. My dear husband, would you like to tell your other family why you didn't pay for Liam's tuition, even though you can obviously afford to pay for it? I, I just wanted to show him that he could support himself. I wanted him to tough it out. How could you do that, Gordon? He's your son and he needed your support. I was helping you too. Why aren't you being grateful? 
I'm grateful for everything you've helped us with, truly. I'm especially grateful for you paying my college tuition, but Gordon, if I'd known that this was how you treated your family, I would have never accepted your offer. Gordon looked like he'd just been hit by a ton of bricks. He couldn't believe that the cute little family who lived next door was finally seeing his true colors, and by the looks on Vanessa and Hope's faces, he could tell that these true colors of his weren't pretty. You should be ashamed of yourself, Gordon. I told you about my divorce. I told you I left that man because he never cared about us. And you said that he was awful for doing that. But I see that you're exactly like him, prioritizing everyone else except what's important, your family. Hope then turned to me with shameful eyes and said, Cora, I can't even express to you how sorry I am for this. I had no idea that Gordon was this type of man. I let his generosity get to my head and I didn't even stop to ask how you felt about all this. I let the same thing that happened to me happen to you and I'll never forgive myself for it, but I'm hoping that you will. Well, don't be sorry now. This is the man that you've adored for all these years. Hope, I know you've always wanted Gordon, so I'm glad to say that he's all yours. I don't care for your apology. It's a little too late, I believe. So... I hope you two welcome him into your lives now that you know everything. Vanessa, I hope that you love this new father of yours. Which father? He is no father of mine. He's a prick. Gordon was looking defeated as he had three very angry women looking at him with utter disgust and disappointment. I continued to tell Gordon that he was worthless and that I'd see him in court. I left Hope and Vanessa in the house not caring what they did. But as I was going downstairs and loading up my car with my belongings, I could hear Hope and Vanessa also giving Gordon an earful of their own. From their perspective, they felt betrayed because they were always under the impression that this benefactor of theirs was always a kind and genuine man. But that day, they found all of that to be a lie. As I moved forward with my life embracing my newfound independence, I knew that I had emerged from the wreckage stronger and wiser. Gordon's presence, once a heavy burden on my spirit, had faded into the past, a distant memory of a life I had left behind. He was left as an empty shell of a man with no one to love by his side, and with an ex-wife who was much richer after the divorce settlement. Obviously, he tried to reach out to me, time and time again, talking about how lonely he was, but I didn't care. He needed to suffer just like Liam and I had, and I was glad that he was learning his bitter lesson.